because I want you to feel the vibration and the changes of frequency. But it has to be brought with that purity of spirit and cooperation. How many times that wisdom has been given? Knowledge, yes, but not wisdom. Wisdom is something that you truly earn. You may take lifetime after lifetime to deserve a grain of sand of wisdom. What beautiful and powerful insight by the wise teacher herself, Morna Nalamaku Simona. Aloha kako, salofa and namaste. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you all for doing me a favor and joining me today for this journey. For those who have taken on Ho'oponopono as more of a serious spiritual practice and beyond the four phrases. I created this channel as I am forever indebted to Morna's teachings and for allowing me to leave three decades of suffering by taking on the 12-step process of Ho'oponopono. Today I want to share with you what exactly these colors represent from a spiritual perspective. Along with my personal understanding of what this exactly does to enhance your practice of Ho'oponopono and why. I will also review some of the research I've conducted, both spiritually and physically, that led me to know from a deeper sense of how these can both be beneficial and which one I'm leaning towards. Then finally, I will include some tips to help you sharpen your spiritual sense of imagination. Let's flow. What exactly is color cleansing? It is sometimes known as color cleansing or mental bathing, the later was what Morna called it. Color cleansing is a spiritual tool and powerful form of thought implanting, also known as ho'upu'upu. This orm of metal bathing was introduced by the wise teacher master Kahuna Morna Simeona, who gifted this form of mental bathing to the world when she introduced her 12-step process of ho'oponopono. Most people have perhaps heard of ice blue. This is a term mostly spoken of by Morna's student, Hugh Len, who also spoke of blue solar water in many of his seminars. Mental bathing can be done to purify yourself or for someone else with the gift of water without actually using the substance itself. She called this improvising. Morna stated that she sometimes used a cup of water or simply just imagined it. She taught that even a six-year-old could do this, and so you can too. Mental bathing was the eighth step in the original process she revised from the Hawaiian sacred prayer process. Let's review it. Feel free to grab your free 12-step guide at rainbowflow.com. Be sure to check your spam files also. Morna always said wisdom is to be shared, and so I shall too share this copy in good faith with you. Now this sheet before us is the original, please excuse the typos. At the time, these were done on a very early computer since it was the 80s, or by typewriter. Very costly to fix typos. After you've completely detached yourself from any involvement while performing a Ho'oponopono, either for yourself or others. In the eighth step, you are instructed to mentally bathe with four specific colors by imagining each color streaming in from the very top of our heads to the bottom of our toes, seven times each, not 10 or three, seven. Now the first question you may have, why seven times? Why is the number seven important? Seven is the location where the magic and impurities are cleansed. This realm is known as the void. Here, silent solitude exists or emptiness. We do not call it zero because that is a scientific definition. To define it as such is not giving it the reverence it deserves. Morina was clear in her terminology that it was undefinable pure. The first color that is to be sent in is purplish blue. This color represents the highest form of spiritual thought and feeling, as well as the top of your head and the coordinating chakras nearby. The next color is emerald green. It represents the heart space, healing, harmony, and balance. Now, if you're following along in the book Coronation of Consciousness by her student, Michael McClee, you will notice this has been altered. The first color he states is indigo, and the second color is magenta. Both change from purplish blue and emerald green. So if one were to look at the chakra system, one might think, oh, it's out of order. 
This was no mistake by Morna. She placed emerald green just after the purplish blue because of one very important factor, heart and mind coherence. These two aspects work as a unit from a spiritual sense. While I do support this book, I think it is beneficial for anyone who wants to go deeper into the teachings. I do not agree with the changes that are made here. Based on my personal experience with transmutation while doing Ho'oponopono, it is difficult for me to say that color is indigo. The reason I believe she said purplish blue is because it isn't like any color here in the physical realm when you can see it for yourself. Rather, this is somewhat of a blend. Our human eyes should see it as both to get the best idea of how vivid this color is from a spiritual sense. So the next color is ice blue. This color we've heard lots about over the past 30 years. It represents different situations according to Dr. Len, such as physical or emotional pain, which he stated he was given inspirational insight. From Morna's perspective, I found the closest, most accurate information from the book Merging with Siva, written by wise yogis and sages, who stated, true spiritual unfoldment are indicated by a clear light blue. End quote. They also say that when it comes to color, it's two sides of the spectrum. The duller blue tints and hues towards dark indigo indicate a low superstitious form of religion. Perhaps this is why Morna didn't use the word indigo. By the way, having four colors was purposefully done by Morna. Four in the physical equals balance and harmony. Secondly, in the earliest definition of the Ha defined as breath of life, the Ha means four as well. Four is symbolic of the elements, fire, air, water, and earth. All right, on to the icing on the cake. The last and final, perhaps the most essential, is the white light. White represents the pure spirit. It is the essence of all in creation, known as the positive side of the polarity, and to the Hawaiians as the Ku force. For theosophists or occultists, it is known as the great white light. This color is the fourth because it transcends any other light or color witnessed by man. So why did Morna place this one last? Well, if you pour white on top of the colors she originally presented as a stream of colors, it raises the others and renders them clearer, like a sealant locking them in. With that said, she starts with the positive aspect within each hue. This is very important. When we look at the greens, the darker greens beyond emerald, as shown below, would lean into the unwanted emotional aspects or virtues. She was specific in her choice of hues. She starts with the first positive hue within each color system as seen here. In Morna's final teaching, she stated that during the age of Aquarius, we would receive the ability to transmute with our imagination. I agree wholeheartedly. I believe her clairvoyance was precise. So now is the time to sharpen our skills and prepare for a new age. Many say we have officially entered. One way to practice, either receiving a shower of light by visualizing a spiral stream, the length of your body. Allow it to pour down from the top of your head to your toes, seven times, seven individual streams. Take your time. If you want, you can start by just imagining a solid, steady color in your hand, perhaps the shape of a ball. Do this before moving on to colors or vibrations in motion. Working with all four colors is best practice as a unit while doing the Hawaiian process cleansing bath. It fully instills balance and harmony, which is what Ho'oponopono is truly created for. Some masters suggest only the pure white light if you're having problems imagining. Thanks for joining me. Aloha and blessings to all.